Fall has begun to take hold of Colorado. The nights are in the 30s, the days are in the 70s, and the aspens are just beginning to show their first signs of their golden yellow leaves. Chasing the fall colors of Colorado can be an adventure all on its own. A mountainside can be nearly leafless while a forest just over a pass will still be a sea of green. We have been missing our adventure family this year, and we haven't met up all season long. With the busy summer schedules behind us all, we decided to meet up with hopes of laying eyes on the golden aspen forests. The morning sun is starting to chase away the fog, melt the frost, and is reminding us that this is one of the most beautiful times of the year to be out here. We're syncing up the radios, packing up the trucks, and feeling the excitement of this weekend. <laughs> many of you know me by now, but many of you don't. I'm Tyler, and with me is my beautiful wife, Natalia, and of course, our old dog, Blue. And on this trip, our friend Andrew is in the tundra, and Jesse and Michaela are in the Tacoma. About seven years ago, Andrew tagged along with a family member on a trip, and since then, he's become one of the pack, while Jesse and I have been friends since about eighth grade. After following Natalie out to Colorado in my early 20s, I soon heard that Jesse had a new girlfriend named Michaela. Turns out, Natalie and Michaela were childhood family friends and hadn't seen each other in nearly 15 years. It's another one of those mysterious vortex anomalies. Today's trail will hopefully take us to a vantage point where we can spot some of the yellow forests in the distance and direct us from there. Driving the trails in the fall with the yellow leaves falling from the trees is quite a beautiful experience and I've only been able to time it correctly once before. There is a tinge of yellow in the plants that are seasonally affected, so I am hopeful.
we had several people that decided not to come. So I kind of planned this trail around vehicles that weren't quite as set up as ours. But because those people ended up not coming, we're able to get a little more rowdy. Fall is officially like next week. In Colorado, fall hits really early and the higher you are, the more you're gonna feel it. It actually starts to feel like winter for a lot of people. But, um, but yeah, so we wanted to get out and we're really hoping to see some colors in the leaves and we're not really seeing too much of that yet just because we've had such a wet year but um but either way it's pretty out here right now i'm usually the person in the group putting these trips together and in previous years sharing map and route data with the group has been quite a pain onyx off-road in the last couple of years has made several updates that make the process incredibly easy I can now share potential campsites, waypoints, areas, routes, photos, and even notes for things like a radio channel for the weekend. Everything I add to the shared folder while I have cellular service automatically updates. So now we're all on the same page and it's not just me that has all of our trip data. It really does make it easier for everyone. Now, we're getting into the fun part of this trail. We've climbed nearly 1,000 feet in elevation and the smooth graded dirt is behind us. Our views from up here are both good news and bad news. I can see the aspens in the distance and it's a sea of green. Nothing like the fall colors just a few hours from here. The good news, however, is that we're still out here and we're still getting to see this epic landscape. Finding our way into the trees, we are starting to encounter more mud and slick surfaces. For the FJ, the roof load plus the short wheelbase makes places like this more challenging at times. I'm directing Natalia to try to prevent the front end from sliding out from underneath her. But I got her a little too close to the tree. I can now confirm that the Alucab awning can handle a significant load against the side of it. Like that, you're gonna slide, you're okay. Pass it a little bit more, right there. All right, come forward. All right, Andrew, you're gonna have to give me just a second, buddy. This is definitely gonna be more of a challenge for you. Yeah, keep coming down. Andrew's truck length and lower center of gravity is definitely a benefit here. Come on through. Now you got the tree root holding you up, so you should be fine. That was better than us. Yeah. I went wide he took a up the top. Yeah, much wider path. Jesse has a short wheelbase, a low center of gravity, 35s, and tends to pick better lines than me.
don't run into muddy trails like this very often in Colorado, but it's a welcome, fun change to the trail conditions that we're used to out here. As far as mud goes, this stuff really isn't too slick. It's just enough to be fun. Just as we're making our descent down this section of rocks, we have a few jeeps coming up our way. Andrew doesn't have a rear locker, so it would be quite a challenge for him to back back up this. The group is nice enough to back down the slight descent to let us by. So technically they have the right of way because they're coming up the trail. 
Alright, let's do it. Let's get out of their way. We keep thinking that we're about to come to an area with camping opportunities and we keep getting disappointed. We're starting to climb again and even if we do find a place here, it will likely be near freezing as soon as the sun dips behind the mountains. On a trail like this, we have no choice but to just keep pushing forward. When days start to get too long on the trail, mistakes start to get made. Andrew's mishap could have been much worse, but it's sounding the alarm that driving fatigue is setting in for all of us. There is plenty of flat ground everywhere up here. But in Colorado, you can't just claim anywhere you want. The tundra is a sensitive habitat, so we always do our part to not destroy it. Even when that means pushing through a little bit longer to find an established campsite. But finally, with the majority of this trail behind us, we should be able to find camp soon. And it's probably a good time to get out and stretch while we take our obligatory group photo for this adventure. A photo we can all look back on in 30 years to see how young we looked laugh at how much it would probably hurt now and wish that we had done this more often. And I'm sure all of it will feel like it was just yesterday. We have a beautiful vantage point up here. And we can already see some openings in the trees as potentials for tonight's home. Right by his shoulder, so making sure we're not gonna drive us off the road. I think you're on the right line. That might be a fun obstacle to the right. I couldn't really tell what was going on. 
So luckily there is no fire ban in effect, which is awesome. Which is very nice. I don't really know how many fire bans there were in Colorado this year. I didn't keep up on it because honestly, I wasn't really having any fires, but um, right now I definitely checked and we're good to go, which is great because it is chilly. Yeah, and we had a fire last night when we first got into camp there and had one going and it was, it nice. was so nice. Yeah. It was so nice. I almost have forgotten how nice it is to have a fire because we've been camping in fire bands for so long. Andrew has been put to work. Jesse needs help to meet his standards of what a wood pile is supposed to look like. When he's at the helm of campfire duty, he tends to prepare like we're gonna be stuck here until the end of winter. But no one's complaining about his over-preparedness. All three of us guys on this trip love the same things. Big trucks, big tires, and big fires. And I gotta wonder if it's something in our DNA or something else entirely. Serious. Yeah, buddy. He's trying to survive. <laughs> so we've literally been on the trail since like 11 a.m. And we're just now getting to camp. It's like 7.30. We got here probably 20 minutes ago and we've been setting up. And so um, we're just going to kind of hang out around the fire and try to chill out together. And then tomorrow we're going to do, we're going to kind of take it easy. I had plans for another trail, but it turns out we don't have quite as much time as we thought we did. So that's okay. So tomorrow I think we're going to do something a little easier that doesn't take the entire day. So we can actually hang out at camp more because while it's fun doing trails all day long, there's also something cool to just hanging out with your friends at a campsite. So tomorrow's Sunday. So we should have the pick of the campsites farther over. We'll have more of an open view at a spot like that tomorrow. And so then we can do some astrophotography because we're pretty much in the forest right now, so we can't really do that. But either way, beautiful campsite, and uh, we're just glad to be stopped. I think everybody was feeling the wear of the road today, the wear of the trail today. So uh, anyway, it's time to make dinner. I mean, we could have done it. Any one of us would have done it. I've some pretty gnarly shit before. Like that time we went, that, like that biggest mine we ever saw. Remember that big fucking huge one? The curve was there. We dropped the rock in it. Maybe I went forward up a bit. Uh, no. They back up there. <laughs> like all they needed I, to do I, was I just like in the jeep. Wow. It's the dog's blanket and the little wrapper things for the chairs shoved in under yeah. my underquilt, yeah. and it was just so cold. Yeah. A cold night in a warm fire with your tribe is one of the purest forms of the human experience. We can all sit back and talk about our adventures of the past and plan for the adventures of the future. And yes, of course, give praise to yet another one of Jesse's glorious creations. It's a pretty good fire. I felt like that's where I saw Leave it there. I brought along a new laser pen to test out. In just a few short weeks, we'll be taking our last trip of 2023 to a very unusual place called Skinwalker Ranch. Do the stuff in the dark. It makes the forest look like it's like mapped on a computer. <laughs> that fire is blasted. I know, we noticed that too. <laughs> I like the trees. And like around the
we're taking our time getting ready this morning because we don't exactly know where we're going. We found out yesterday that not everybody planned for a four-day trip. It feels pretty nice not having anywhere to be, but by the time we reach the main road, we'll need to figure out today's game plan. Everybody done with the fire? Everybody's done with the fire, I believe. Andrew and his plentiful amount of water and space has me dreaming of building a pickup of my own. His camping style has changed a lot since the days that he used to ride his dirt bike alongside us, sleeping in a hammock and eating freeze-dried meals. I admire all of his cool contraptions he's come up with for the Tundra and his modifications that specifically fit him and his way of traveling. And it's all DIY. Now it's time to move on and see where the day takes us. of today to explore this area. There are a few short trails nearby that we have time to go check out, a reservoir nearby that we could go spend time at, or we also have the option to go find our pick of the campsites in the area. the last trip in Colorado this year for all of us. Because of driving on this road and being reminded of what we're surrounded by, it hasn't taken us very long to decide what to do. There's a campsite that I've stayed in before with the best views around, and a full day hanging around camp is the day that we all want. So we're going to turn right back around and head back the way we just came from. Beautiful spot. Beautiful. 
The day is heating up, which doesn't last long at this time of the year, at this elevation. So after being stuck in the trucks all day long yesterday, we have the golden opportunity to stretch ourselves out today, and more importantly, wear out this old dog. This place is beautiful to begin with, but the slight changes in the foliage really add to the landscape. And we are so busy looking for aspens when we headed off on this adventure that we didn't really appreciate what was all around us. It looks like we found the fall colors after all. As the sun starts to fall, we're all scrambling to get our camp set up, chores completed, and dinner and dessert cooked. Because the show is about to begin. It's been another awesome day with the group, and we're all about to climb into the warmth of our tents. But a trip with Natalia wouldn't be complete without a deer walking right into camp. This happens incredibly often when she's with me, and it's weird. But these guys will help us rest easy, because if the herbivores are around, the carnivores or not.
Everyone has quite a haul ahead of them. So everybody but Andrew is heading out first thing. We'll see Jesse and Michaela in a few weeks in Utah. But Andrew, we probably won't see until spring. He's gonna do a few laps on the dirt bike since he brought it all this way. Have fun. Oh uh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if I make it all the way up there. This trip was more about just hanging out with our friends and getting to spend some time with them before the uh, the season really comes to a close. But it was very enjoyable and uh, obviously we had beautiful scenery all around us. But we're gonna head back up and make our way back home. The next time I'm out, for sure, there will be yellow leaves or there will be no leaves at all. So, um, yeah, that's a wrap. Another Colorado season is coming to a close for us. These mountains are mere weeks away from the start of being buried in snow. The bears will be crawling into their dens for hibernation and the bitter cold nights will begin. But we have some new and exciting things that are ahead. In a few weeks, we'll be in Utah for the solar eclipse, and then we'll be heading north to observe one of the strangest documented places on Earth, a place called Skinwalker Ranch. As always, thank you so much for watching, and click one of the videos in the corner to check out more of our adventure, off-road, and overland-related content.